come back to New World next week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. Ignored warnings come back to haunt us. We've got that story plus some long-awaited good news. But first, the story heard round the world. General Michael Flynn resigned as Donald Trump's national security advisor after weeks of speculation over his links to Russia turned into days of reporting on the contents of his calls with the Russian ambassador and a day of intense pressure over whether the president could continue to back his pick. Transcripts of intercepted calls between Flynn and Russian ambassador to the U.S. Sergei Kislyev as described by U.S. officials to various news outlets, showed the two had discussed sanctions ahead of Trump's inauguration when Flynn was part of the transition team, but not in post as national security advisor. Transcripts of intercepted calls. I I wonder who did that. So Flynn's 24-day run on the National Security Committee was the shortest stint in history. Trump named retired Lieutenant General Joseph Keith Kellogg Jr. as acting National Security Advisor, according to Flynn's resignation letter, considering other permanent replacements. You might remember the name Keith Kellogg, although I'm not sure if his name specifically came out when we discussed Trapwire. That would be one of his surveillance inventions. We actually talked about Trapwire several years back here on New World Next Week. And again, of course, everything we say and play always included in the show notes, and they will be linked down below so you can continue to go do the research and and keep finding out more things for yourself. So Mike Flynn may be charged with violating... We saw these. I saw these words in the news, and James, you and I, and probably lots of other people, tweeting it basically at the same time when we heard the Logan Act. Suddenly, people interested in enforcing the Logan Act, essentially prohibiting private citizens from negotiating with foreign governments in disputes with the United States. The Logan Act background story is actually a really interesting one, and we'll include links to that as well. It goes back to 1798, where a private citizen from Philadelphia, Dr. George Logan, went to France to try and smooth over some of the revolution actions that were interfering with the U.S., James, this story, as as we've talked about, everything's kind of topsy-turvy. A lot of people who have been active the last eight years are all kind of going down in their hidey hole, and the people who have been asleep for eight years are very wide awake and very agitated, even just kind of talking with a neighbor and just, you know, talking cats and stuff. He's He, he wanted to talk about, you know, did you see this? Did you see this guy? People are pretty amped up, dude. What's What's your take on the Flynn situation? Well, everyone's amped up, and both people on both sides of the spectrum are looking at the wrong issues and thinking of it in the wrong way. Um, it's interesting, as you point out, yourself and myself, and I'm sure many other people in the alt media are seeing Logan Act and alarm bells ring, because the other side of that is, of course, Bilderberg and groups like that are themselves a violation of the Logan Act, and every U.S. Uh, citizen, private citizen, that goes there to negotiate with the foreign leaders of governments that are there at uh, Bilderberg every year are in violation of the Logan Act. The other part of Logan Act uh, lore that we should bring up is the fact that it was passed, uh, signed into law in 1799 by President Adams. It has only ever been used to charge one person ever, and it has never been used to prosec- uh, successfully prosecute anyone ever in the whatever hundred, uh, uh, couple hundred year history of the, the Logan Act now, because... Uh, it, it's pretty much unprosecutable at this point. It's a clear uh, abrogation of First Amendment rights. Um, if you look at the person who was actually charged under it, some Pennsylvania farmer or something, um, it was because he wrote an op-ed basically just saying that he thought that uh, the Louisiana Purchase should be given back to France or whatever. I mean, it was it was ridiculous and unprosecutable. It's a stupid law, but the point is, it, it Bilderberg is on its face a violation of the Logan Act. All the U.S. citizens attending Bilderberg every year are in violation of it. It's never brought up. It's never been a political issue. No one cares about the Logan Act until there's a political, you know brouhaha that can be used to their advantage about it. Flynn won't be prosecuted under it, precisely because A, it's unprosecutable, and B, they don't want to set that precedent. They just want to throw it out there and get people kind of acquainted with it and kind of give the insinuation that there was some sort of breach of uh, law going on here, and then, you know, it'll it'll be swept under the rug. But of course, it will be etched in people's minds, like your your neighbor and, and other people who kind of just tune into the news just enough to get whatever their political flavor of news is. Um, again, 
There are so many incredibly important issues going on here, including, as you point out, who, where did these transcripts of the phone calls come from? Of course, from the NSA. And uh, I, I'll throw a link into an article I was reading earlier this morning about how one of the uh, congressmen who's just outraged, outraged that they were recording uh, Flynn's phone calls and listening in was one of the congressmen who was all for the NSA's ability to record and monitor all U.S. Uh, anyone's phone calls, right? It's all fine, except in until it's, it's one of the people in the government. Who would have ever thought, except the people who have been pointing out, like myself and yourself and others for years, you know, this is the power. This is the real power in government. It isn't the elected officials that you, you tick a box for. It's the people who are listening in on their phone calls and transcribing everything they're doing. And the people with that a access to that power have the blackmail power over the ostensible government. So... This story touches on so many important things, none of which are going to be covered. It's all going to be about, oh, it's, you know, see, it's Trump and Russia and all of this. And they're going to spin it away from the, I think, the really important bedrock issues here. Um, and no surprise there is uh, the craziness just ranch ratchets up and people just get swept away with it. And there's, yeah, there's a lot to get kind of swept away. <laughs> James, you and I were kind of joking off mic beforehand. Our friend Morgan Lesko, I remember just after the election, kind of created a graphic and had a tweet playing on, you know, you've seen the airport airplane things where it says, put your own oxygen mask on first before you try and administer help to anyone else. Morgan basically said, hey, everybody calm down. Make sure you adjust your own kind of personal, emotional, spiritual self before you go out and try and help all kinds of other people. So I think that's some pretty good advice on this New World Next Week episode number 298 for February 16th, 2017. Our second story this week, I think, is another one that we can look at as blowing up in our faces. A never-happened-before event. As the Oroville Dam drains, a problem remains. You may have heard about massive, possible breach of a dam in California. 200,000 people were, uh, were evacuated at some point. Now, I think that order has been lifted, and the immediate you know, fears have kind of subsided. But the background on this, and then I'll kind of extrapolate why I think this is this is important. The Mercury News reports that more than a decade ago, federal and state officials and some of California's largest water agencies rejected concerns that the massive earthen spillway at the Oroville Dam, at risk of collapse and prompting evacuations, could erode during heavy winter rains and cause a catastrophe. People warned about this 12 years ago, James. <laughs> So I, I don't know if you have any any comments on this story, if you've seen it kind of play out over overseas or not, if you have any comments on this. No. In fact, as the Canadian in Japan, I'm going to pull my Canadian in Japan card. I haven't even heard of the Orville Dam before you sent me the link to this story. So you'll have to uh, fill me in on this and what it says about America's crumbling infrastructure in general. Honestly, I hadn't I hadn't heard of it by name either until, you know, the story really, really started I think why I wanted to kind of talk about this, I think just like you know, our dams bursting and our bridges collapsing, which we see happening more and more frequently and everything else, we wait for it to blow up in our faces. That was one of my like earliest kind of political social realizations growing up as a kid in America. I was like, oh, we're really into prevention. We just wait till something blows up in our face and then we throw all kinds of money and all kinds of resources at it once it's essentially too late or too late to do anything really effective. I'm kind of dealing with this right now. Real talk time. I let my health and exercise slide all last year while I rebuilt Media Monarchy after being in the commercial radio stations. So now, kind of in the cold of winter here and we had the worst winter, you know, the most snow we've ever had here in probably about 37 years here in Oregon. Also, along with some family emergencies I'm dealing with, and you can get more on that story on my daily broadcast if I've been talking about it on the Morning Monarchy and even the, the Pump Up the Volume DJ set as well. I realized again that you have to work on these things ahead of time, all the time. It's the ounce of prevention cliche. So I basically spent a year not exercising enjoying recreational cannabis here in Oregon, and then when it's time to go cook in the kitchen, crack open some beers. And then winter hit, and then family emergencies hit, and you realize, oh, I'm not going to fix problems I let slide over the course of a year with one rigorous weekend of running and juicing. It's not going to happen. So I, I, I find this story really interesting. And again, I, 
I think adding the personal to these stories that we see gets at, again, what you and I were talking about just off mic. Your latest video about the weird Japanese festival resonates really well, and I think it's resonating with people. That as we see all of this ratcheting up, you know, and just trying to not wig out about everything, these are, you know, these are crazy times. Things are pretty topsy-turvy, James. Any thoughts on that before we move on to our third and final segment? Uh, just that you bring up such an important point. We talk about the body politic, but that's uh, and that's a metaphor that is in some ways something, it reflects something very real. The politics is essentially just all of us and the ways that we relate to the outside world. And if we are screwed up on the inside in whatever way, in, in terms of mental health or physical health or whatever, that's going to be reflected in the types of relations that we start to manifest in society as well. So absolutely, ounce of prevention is worth uh, a, a million pounds of cure, um, especially when it comes to dealing with the, the biggest problems that society has to offer. So I think we can all, we all should be constantly introspective and thinking about the ways that we can get right on the inside before we take it out, uh, out to the outside as well. Mm -hmm. Now, since for, for a lot of those reasons I've even kind of just mentioned, I haven't managed to shoot a new episode of Good News Next Week recently. So, let's have some right here. Let's do a twofer. Montana House passes bill to block National License Plate Tracking Program. This via Off Now, a Montana bill that would limit the use of automated license plate readers, ALPRs or ALPRs, I'm not sure if they pronounce it that way, I'm gonna, in the state and place significant roadblocks in the way of a federal program using states to help track the location of millions of everyday people through pictures of their license plates. It overwhelmingly passed a full house. So that's a little bit of good news about the automotive industrial complex in Montana. And another one kind of goes right along with that in Ohio via Matt Agarist who says if you take away the political corruption, the bribery scandals, the increased accidents, which I have got an archive of stories on media monarchy that I've discussed in the past, and, of course, the police state issues with red light cameras, even if you take all that stuff away, you're still basically left with a system that doesn't have any due process. After the corporatist red light camera industry spread through the nation massively, people are finally beginning to realize the dystopia of it. After they woke up to the fact that their, of course, due process had been removed by Opto Traffic, a private vendor allowed to extort citizens with the blessings of New Miami, Ohio politicians, the people fought back in the form of a class action lawsuit. Court finds speed cameras unconstitutional and the extra bonus kicker forces the city to repay all the tickets. So that's a nice little late. Christmas present there, James. I know you had tweeted out the story about the Montana National License Plate Tracking Program. I like to add the uh, the uh, the red light cameras to it as well, James. Well, good news stories indeed. And um, if people haven't checked out the the Montana story, I will suggest they do so at offnow.org. That is uh, from Michael Meharry, who I've had on the program a couple of times. We talked, for example, about the Nullify NSA campaign that they were running, and uh, they're highlighting some of these... Uh, legislative successes and as someone cynically notes on twitter since when does making something illegal ever stop them from doing it anyway exactly right that's true but it is a good to have this codified in law so that at least people can be prosecuted when they inevitably find find to have been broken breaking the law but the point i think ultimately behind this is that it's it has to do with people's mindset you're right people have just accepted it or were indoctrinated into it you know uh, red light cameras is just the new normal, so now let's just put up with it. Or, oh, oh, okay, so they have these automatic license plate readers that they've been using to track everyone's cars for the last eight years, and they're just now telling us about it. Oh, well, I guess it's a fait accompli, nothing you can do about it. Now, I think the point is to combat that mentality. Again, it's about getting right on the inside and realizing that you are an independent, individual, free human being. And when you act and think and exude that from your very being, it makes a difference in the world. It really does. And if we just go along with it, oh, I guess it's the new normal. What are you going to do? The system's rigged. Then uh, then you're already defeated on the inside. And that's, uh, I mean, that's the most effective form of slavery, really. I have actually, that, that even hits to, I think, what would be a great, you know, great way to wrap up this episode. <laughs> In the past, you know, when I've had anxiety issues, Mom's always quick to bust out a Bible verse for me that basically says we weren't made to be a bunch of weak-willed wieners. We were made with strong bodies and strong minds, and we are meant to do, just as you said, you know, exhibit that and be strong and be powerful. 
and be loving and be open with everybody. If that one's too Jesus-y for everybody, another good one from Napoleon Hill basically says, everybody is what they are because of the dominating thoughts which they let, you know, permeate their mind, occupy their mind. So even if, as you said, you know, on Twitter, it was like, yeah, when has the laws ever stopped criminals from doing things? If it gets people who, like you were saying, sort of go along to get along and go, oh, well, whatever, what can you do? If they start to think about it and go, oh, they removed them, why? They're unconstitutional? And then hopefully that gets that ball rolling. I think that's a great way to wrap up this episode 298 of Good News Next Week. always want to remind you to subscribe to the shows and to please support our work. We are completely independent, non-commercial alternative outlets. We're not fake news. We're not funded with weird clicks. None of that garbage. You've never seen ads or pre-rolls on any of our stuff in the nearly combined... Jeez, James, can I say that you and I have been doing this for a combined almost 20 years? I suppose so. A combined 20 years of experience. We should add that to the tagline. You know, it's weird. I don't remember weak-willed wieners in my version of the Bible. Maybe uh, maybe that's not, maybe that's one of those new translation things. It wasn't in the King James version. Where'd you get the kids in the Bible? All right. Excellent stuff, James. Thank you again for three stories. Looking forward to it next week. Thanks, buddy. Take care.